Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ha'arakach, Wadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. I also want to acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, so <clears throat> um, through the Spirit, I'm, I'm going to be in uh, Luke 9, and I'm going to start at 51. It reads, And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, <clears throat> and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Hamashiach, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven? and consume them even as Elias did. <laughs> so see, remember the prophet, the prophet Elijah, he, he brought fire down from the heavens. That's, that's the kind of powers we're gonna be tapping into as men in this truth, you see? And that's why the, uh, the disciples were inquiring about this. So we just burn them up, you know? Let's read it. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. <clears throat> so, just because that particular, you know, area didn't receive them, Hey, he was, you know, where the Samaritans were. It was just time to move to the next, the next city, you know. Shake the dust off, you know. They don't receive you, shake the dust off. <clears throat> let me get back to, let me see. But ultimately, that's what we're doing. We're trying to save the elect, Right. That's what we do the lessons and the videos and the camps for. Because this prophecy says, and we know the elect is going to believe this knowledge and this truth. <clears throat> Where am I at? Luke 9 and 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Hamashiach, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have not have nests, but the Son of Man hath where hath not where to lay his head. Alright, so Yahweh Shai didn't have a he didn't have a, a luxurious home. Alright, he didn't have he didn't even have an apartment to go to, you know what I'm saying? And you know, think about think about that, you know, that's the that's a that's a tough thing to bear when you ain't got nowhere to lay your head, you know. But one of the brothers was talking about it when you know these uh, these men who are already homeless, you know they they have they don't have the uh, the stress or the or the um, concern or the worry of like a mortgage or a rent or a you know car note or your bills, you know they they leave that behind, right? I was shy. He didn't have a place to live, man. So that's why it, it, it says uh, <clears throat> it's good to be in that spirit to not want anything, you know. Yeah, let me get that. Any. Let me get that. that verse. Psalms 34 and 10, and we'll come right back to the. Uh, the, we'll come right back to the <clears throat> Luke, but Psalm 34 and 10, and it reads, 
The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek Yahweh Shem Yahweh shall not want any good thing. See, so when we are really waxing strong in this truth, it means you're going to be able to sacrifice this whole world. You're not going to want any good thing. You know, anything you thought was good in the past, you know, whether it be money, your cars, your, your, you know, your, or the place where you live, your woman, you know, those are all considered good things, right? Well, you're in this truth, you really got to be willing to just um, let go of everything, you know? Because the good thing is, is you're going to get it all back, see? We're going to get it all back and some, you know? But, you know, it's good to be in, you know, in a low state. And take things cheerfully, right? It's Sirach. Let me get that real quick. Ecclesiasticus, Sirach. Let's see. Maybe it was six, I'm trying to remember. Bear with me, I'm looking for it. So take cheerfully when now I brought, yeah, it's, I was close. Ecclesiastes 2 and 2. <clears throat> well, let's read 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right? Set thy heart aright, meaning your mind. Set your mind aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. So if you're dealing with the time of trouble, and especially when we're coming into Jacob's trouble, we got to constantly endure, man. You know? And the word endure goes into being made hard, being made hard, right? It goes into patience, which patience goes into uh, suffering, you know? So when you endure, you suffer, your mind is going to get right, you know? Verse 3, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou may be, mayest be increased at thy last end. See? So if we can get through Jacob's trouble with the understanding and the diligence and the knowledge of these holy scriptures, then um, we're going to be increased at the last end. Meaning everything, we're going to be, like Ezra said it, he said we're going to have an abundance and be merry. And the heathen's going to envy us. But not doing, be able to do nothing about it. It tells you that in Ezra, Second Ezra, in uh, I believe it's chapter two. Let's get it real quick. Because you're gonna get everything back, man. You're gonna get whatever you lose on this side. You're gonna get, man. We can't even fathom what we're gonna get back in the kingdom. It's gonna be. Uh, I mean, it's going to be something that we can't even think of, you know, what he has in store for us. But even on this side, you're going to, you know, before the, before the, uh, the last day, the day of wrath, man, when, when the, you know, the great deliverance happens, you know, we're going to be delivered, but we're going to, you know, we're going to have, we're going to have more than everybody who's not in this truth, you know, the ones who don't believe this truth. It says, 2 Ezra 2.27, Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith Hamashiach. My hands shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. See? <laughs> so you think, you know, you think you're going through some shit right now, maybe, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is you're going through. But if you're a man in, in the truth and you're in this, you're part of this faith, you're pushing this doctrine, the true doctrine of the Lord, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, 
then you're going to have that merriness in abundance, man. You're going to be happy with an abundance. It, whatever it is that you want abundance of, you're going to have that, you know. And even during Jacob's trouble, man. See? Let's see. But he... see so yeah this is Jeremiah 36 I'm gonna just bring it out because you might be going through some shit right now but when when, it, when America collectively gets humbled you know because that's what's gonna happen in Jacob's trouble people are gonna get either killed or they're gonna get humbled you know and it ain't gonna be their choice on oh, which which one um, you know which one, which side they fall on. It's not your choice. It's Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. If they if they decide they're gonna humble you and you repent, and you're an Israelite, then hey, so be it. But if you're that wicked ass two third and you just can't come to terms with this knowledge and this truth, because the Lord set you up like that, that's how He made your chemistry in your body, where well, you're just a reject. You know. Well, this this stuff is uh, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be saved. You're not gonna be part of the elect, right? Jeremiah thirty and seven. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So we already know the elect is gonna get saved out of it. We call ourselves the hopeful elect, because we're out here doing the work, you know, of the one as just as Yahweh Bashem Yashai commanded us all right so <clears throat> let me go back to let me go back to Luke nine then I'm at fifty eight no fifty nine but the reason why I said that is Jacob's trouble. We're gonna, we're, we may be dealing in that same situation as Yahweh Shai. We won't have a place to live, you know. We won't have a place to lay our head. So these are all things that come with, you know, the prophecies. Verse 59. And he said, unto another follow me but he said Yahweh suffer me first to go and bury my father so he told he's got to follow him he said let me go bury my dad first what did he what did Yahweh should I tell him let's read it Yahweh Shai said unto him let the dead bury the dead but go thou and preach the kingdom of Yahweh all right <laughs> so that's what we're doing man preaching the kingdom of Yahweh even if your dad dies, hey, go let them get, let the dead tend to that. You know, we want to speak to the to the ones who have life, who are believing this truth, because the the truth brings life. You know. So these people who are in this dead state, you know, they're gonna make a big old deal about a funeral, about a, somebody dying. They're going to be like, uh, and then they didn't even talk to that person for like five years before they died. But they're going to be up there at the top front pew, crying their asses off, you know, putting on a big show. Then when they get home, be talking shit about the dead person, like, you know, or having those evil thoughts about toward that dead person because they're dead. You know, it's a useless thing to go to your, your family's funerals and stuff. You know, you, you can mourn, nothing wrong with mourning, but the whole ritual that Esau Edom has given you, you know, he, he wants you to cremate your, your people and all this other madness, which you look into that, cremation started out with the Greeks, so that shows you that's a pagan custom, you know. And you got half our people, they want to be cremated, you know, which is not, that's, that's a wicked thing, you know. But they are going to get cremated, you know, in the end. If they're lucky enough to get to that point, they will they will be cremated, these damn heathen and these two-thirds that want to be cremated when they die. <clears throat> but 
But a righteous mindset, man, you want to be a, you want to have a proper burial, you know. You want your whole body to be buried, and you'll be turned to ashes, ashes, dust to dust, you know. But you, but right now, there's there's people living on the earth that will not taste death. See, because we're getting close, man. They shall not see death. Yep, it's in Matthew. I knew it was in Matthew. I just didn't know where exactly. Matthew 10, 16, 28, it tells you. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall, which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. See, that means that we're going to see the chariots. We're going to get taken up. We're going to get saved at the, in, in the last moment, scarcely, you know. So let the dead bury the dead. There's some of us ain't going to die. You know, some of you are dead spiritually. You're dead to this knowledge, dead to this truth, dead to salvation. And why is that? Because you don't believe the truth. You have, you know, you have no uh, pleasure in truth. Instead, your pleasure is in wickedness, and you've been lied to, so you really don't even know how to discern righteousness from wickedness, you know? Um, where am I at? 61. And, also, and another also said, Hamashiach, I will follow thee, but, first, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. So this guy, this is what we talk about all the time. You know, you can't put your hand on the plow and look back. Meaning, when you're on a plow, that means you're working. All right? So you don't want to stop working. You don't want to stop doing this truth for anything. See? That's how important it is, you know? And if you take your hand off the plow, meaning you stop doing the work because you want to go do some heathen shit or you want to go do some whatever it is, you know, you're not fit for the kingdom, man. Let's keep reading. Verse 10. And after these things, Yahweh appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. <coughs> See, so Yahweh Shai, he was setting up some order, you know. Just like the elders, they tell us certain things that we should do, you know. Do do one lesson a week, you know. Do, you know, dress properly when you're at camp, you know. Um, you know. Let me keep reading. Verse 2. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore, Yahweh of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. So we should be praying, brothers, that we that we seal the elect. We should be praying for new, uh, new, uh, sincere brothers to come into this thing. You know, pray for your brothers. You know, because that why? Because the the labors are few, man. There's only what eight of us doing the work right now. Eight or nine of us. You know. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. See, and that's what it is, man. We're the lambs. We're like Yahweh Shai, man. Among these wolves. They come out all kind of different angles. You know, you got, you got, I mean, we've seen it all. Well, I shouldn't say we've seen it all, but we've seen a lot, you know. We were reflecting on that yesterday at camp, just all the some of the things we've seen happen at camp, you know, and the scoffing and the and the and the um, you know the the uh, hate and chaos comes from all walks of heathen, you know. We got our own people. Yesterday you had the Edomite. You had, um, I mean, come on, it, we've seen a lot, you know, and we're lamb. That's us being lambs among the wolves, because the lamb is gentle. We're just out here reading the Bible teaching our people the truth and our people have a problem with it and so do the Edomites you know and I really um, the majority of the people have a problem with us teaching this truth 
So let's keep reading. Verse 4. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. See? So he was given directions, just like our elders give us directions, you know. Elder Jahar, he'll, if, if, if someone in GMS is fucking up or some camp is found to be doing some wicked shit, hey, you know, you could hear it in the elders' voices when they're, when they're, um, when they're telling us, hey, you know, you better, you better get in line, man. You better get in, you know, examine yourself daily. You better, you know, you, you're doing some wicked shit. You ain't a part of GMS, man. You know? Verse 5. And in whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. See? So we always come in peace. We come to just teach the truth. We don't come to, to fight people or to, uh, you know, antagonize um, anything, really. It, it, we just come to bring out the truth. And in the, in, in the process, you know, people want to fight and people want to be antagonized, you know? So let's see, where are we at? Verse 5. And in into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. Okay? So give it the benefit of the doubt, man. Even when a scoffer comes up, you know, you, you give him the benefit of the doubt. Yesterday the guy the guy that was scoffing, he came up with a cigarette and all I said was, Hey, you know, take can you go smoke that cigarette? We don't smoke over here. So if you smoke, you can come back and listen when you put your cigarette out. And he freaked out. He got all mad. He got all emotional, you know. <clears throat> so that was a sense. I, I was I peacefully told him to, you know, put his cigarette out, you know. And he got mad. Verse 6. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. See, and that's what these Jehovah's wickedness, that's what they do. They go to house to house. It says here, stay in the same house, man. Especially if the peace return on to you, returns on to you, you know. If they receive you, man, people receive you, then hey, there you go, dwell in that house, Let, teach them, you know. Don't go from door to door, because Yahweh already given you a, a, a place to teach, if someone to dwell with for that time. Let's see. Verse 8. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, Eat such things are as set before you. Alright, so these people receive you, then hey, it's okay to break bread with them, you know. Verse 9. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of Yahweh is come nigh unto you. And the sick, who's the sick? The Israelites are the sick, right? It's not talking about they all have the COVID. No, it means they don't have the understanding of the Bible. So that's how you heal them. It's a metaphor, right? Let's get it in Isaiah. One and I think three. No, one and five. Yeah, Isaiah one and five. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. See, and this is talking about Israelites, our people. Saying, Why would you revolt anymore? Why would you go do any more worse than you're already doing? The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. So our people are sick and faint. Meaning they don't understand anything when it pertains to this knowledge and wisdom. So let's go to verse 10. But into whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you not go your ways out into the streets of the same and say even the very dust of your city which cleaveth unto us we do wipe off against you notwithstanding be ye sure of this that the kingdom of Yahweh has come nigh unto you see so when a place don't receive us you know well guess what we're, we're gonna even the dust is against them you know 
the dust of your city and we're wiping it off against you, you know? That's why we throw out them curses at, at the end of uh, camp, you know? We throw a few curses out at the end of the day. And because why? These people don't receive it in Denver, you know? If they did, then you would, you would see a greater movement, you know, in the streets. But it's all at the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahashai, and he's sealing the elect on, uh, on, on his time, you know. Which, hey, it's speeding up, all right? Through the spirit, we can see it's speeding up. This end, hey, like it said, we keep reading it. The kingdom of Yahweh is nigh unto you, meaning near unto you. <clears throat> Verse 12. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Alright, see? So Sodom is going to be more tolerable than America for all of America's wickedness, alright? Which is, America is also known as spiritual Sodom, you know, and Gomorrah. Or I'm sorry, spiritual Egypt and Sodom. Let's, uh, let's get that real quick. Revelation 11 and 8 And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city Which is spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt Where also our Hamashiach was crucified And the word crucified means X'd out so Babylon, America is basically where they X'd out the Savior, the Hamashiach. They made him as Jesus, right? White guy. But this place is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Why? Because our people in slavery in Egypt, right? That's why Washington, well, they were slaves in Egypt. Now they're slaves in spiritual Egypt. That's what we're reading about, you know? That's why you have an obelisk in Egypt, you have an obelisk in uh, Washington, D.C. Because it's spiritual Egypt. That's why the pyramids on the dollar. That's why the pyramids on all the city and county um, trucks, you know, out here in Colorado, I'm sure it's the same way everywhere, you know. If you work for the city, your truck is going to have a pyramid on it. Why? Because it's spiritual Egypt. And Sodom. I don't even have to go into that. Sodom, Sodomites are running rampant in Babylon, America. So why else would this place be referred to as spiritual Sodom? Because you have nothing but homosexuals enabled here and, and uh, privileged here in Babylon, America to do wickedness. Okay? So let's go back to it. Luke 10. And uh, <clears throat> 13, woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. And this is Yahweh Shai telling, hey, the, the heathen would have repented. Quicker than you fucking Israelites who are in, uh, let me see, Chorazin. Let's first off, let me see where it is on the map. Alright, so it's right by the Sea of Galilee. Let's, let me, let me do it on the screen. This one. So you got in the red letters Chorazim and Bethsaida. Bethsaida. I just like to look these cities up. When we read, we should look our cities up and look at where they were on the map. You can get a, you know, learn that, learn that knowledge. So you see, it's near Galilee, near Lebanon. On the northern part of the Sea of Galilee, 
to where the river is, is where those two cities dwelt, you know. So now we read it again in verse 13. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the, the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon, which are heathen nations, right? Those are, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Hamite nations. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted into heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. See, and you see Capernaum right there. They're all three close to each other. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. See, so if they're despising us, they're really despising Yahweh. If they hear us, they're hearing Yahweh. All right? That's what it is, man. <clears throat> so let's go back to the scripts on the screen. Let me read that one again, 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. So the ones who hear us, he, we that hear Yahweh Shai. All right? They're not hearing us. These are not our words that we read out. These are Yahweh Shai. Literally, the red ones are, are what Yahweh Shai said, actually said. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. You know? If you're, if you're out there despising the prophets, you're really just despised. You despise the truth. You despise this knowledge. You despise Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. You don't despise us. You despise our our power, you know, which is a, a, a great offense, you know. But if you hear us, you're really not hearing us. You're hearing Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And that's what's so strong about GMS. Is we don't detour from the Bible. We use the Bible to to uh, back up what we teach. We're not going to ever use anything else but the Bible. If it doesn't go, if it goes against from what the scripture says, then we can't ride with it, you know? That's how, that's that's the beauty of this thing. That's why we're on one accord. What enables the, the GMS camps to be on one accord even though we're in different cities? The Bible is simple, you know? These other, uh, these other groups can't say that. They detour. They detour from the from the truth, man. And all we gotta do is read it to, to prove that they're detour, they're detouring. The ones who don't detour are the ones who are stick strictly to the the holy scriptures. You see. If you're a man, if you're a woman, it don't matter. If you're not in line with what the scriptures is saying, well then guess what? You're you're dis, you despise the truth. You don't hear the truth. You hear it, but you don't. You're not down with it, you know. So, verse seventeen, and the seventy returned again with joy, saying, "Yahweh, even the the devils are subject unto us through Thy name." See, that's how we are. You know, we're happy because that's what it is, man. The the uh, the these devils are underneath us, man. We can, you know, like I was saying earlier. The Holy Scriptures is our weapon. You know, they can't use this against us. Not that we not now that the, the, the Spirit is dealing with us. So now now all we gotta do is read the scriptures. And if it's lining up with what we're saying, then that shows you we have the truth. And they they wanna, you know, say, hey, we're we're uh, this and that, hating people, we're we're racist, we're uh we're, we're uh, causing a division. Well, it's, it's Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai that's causing the division. It's not us. We're just reading his words, you see. So it says they, they, were, they, they returned with joy. It is joyful. When we leave camp, we're, we're like happy. We're laughing. We're like, oh shit. You see how that Edomite took that? You see what that Edomite did? He couldn't receive that truth. He got, he got cut in his spirit, you know. Oh, you see that Jake? Jake don't 
Jake is gone, man. Jake is destroyed. You see how he handled that? You see how he, he couldn't answer any of this? But what do we do? We were bringing out the scriptures. So it makes us joyful to... You know what? Even if you receive it or if you don't, we're going to be joyful. When you receive it, we're really joyful, man. Builds our faith. You know? But Yahweh Hashem Yahashai, you know... He brings forth his examples every time, every every time we go to camp. There's always going to be an example. That's one thing you can you can you can guarantee on, you know. Verse 17. I don't know, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So Yahweh Shai said, and the word beheld means observed. So let me read it like that. And he said unto them, I observed Satan as lightning fall from heaven. See, in heaven, in this case, is dealing with rulership. And Yahweh Shai, he's, he's saying, I, I can see Satan is falling, meaning the so-called white man, the Edomite, because that's, uh, that's his God. He's, he's literally falling as lightning from heaven right now, you know? He's, lo he's losing his kingdom fast, you see? Just look around. Look at the state of, of the United States of America. The, the lightning, Yahweh Shai described it as lightning, and that was 2,000 years ago, you know? And, and in Peter, it tells you, hey, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. So this is literally in Yahweh Bashim Yahashai, and in their terms, this is three days, you know? And this kingdom is falling. That's why he said, yeah, this is falling like lightning. You know, because it's only been three days. To us, it's been 3,000 years, but that's because we're in the flesh. But to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, three days, like he ain't... Think about that. What'd you do three days ago, you know? Compared to tw <laughs> 2,500 years ago, you know? You weren't even around, but you were around in a different body, you know? you had a, Your soul was the only thing around that was still common. So that's how quickly Satan is fallen from heaven, man. Because now you have prophets and apostles and, and uh, teachers out there doing the same thing that, that, that the, the, the men in, uh, that we're reading about in Luke chapter 10. Let's read it again. And the, seven, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Hamashiach, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Yeah, because when we go out there and teach the truth, and which name are we teaching? Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They become subjects unto us, man. There's no way around it. Not, not if you want to. If you want to deal with the scriptures, then the men of GMS, we're the ones who hold this truth. You know. And you come up with your bullshit modern Christianity theology, and you're just gonna get eaten up alive you're gonna get eaten up alive man and that's what it is this is a sign of your kingdom and lightning you're falling from heaven falling from rulership like lightning quick verse 19 behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you now withstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather because your names are written in heaven. So don't be happy because you can tell an Edomite that he's the devil. No, be happy because you are, you are the children of Yahweh and you are the hopeful elect. Be happy for that, you know? Don't be mad just because you can curse Esau on the street, you know, or happy, you know? Because there's way more to it, man. Esau is going to be a thing of the past soon, you know? Well, it's still going to be a thousand years for him in the kingdom but of slavery. But Job tells you in the chapter 5 that he's, he's going to be... Well, let's get it. Let's see if I can find it. Oops. <clears throat> Let 
Yeah, let me see. Okay, I was, I was, I was, I was off. Job twenty. Job twenty and eight, and it says, "He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yeah, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night." And this is talking about the the wicked. All right. Verse, which is Esau Edom. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. See? So Esau is going to be trying to please us in these last days. That's what he's, he does do that at times, you know? And then if we tell him he can't do nothing for us, then that's when he gets sour, you know? He gets pissed off on the street. They mock it, man. They mock the truth because they, they like, they, oh, well, all, none of the white people are going to get go to heaven. All white people are going to burn in hell. That's what they were saying yesterday, you know. But no, you're not going to burn in hell. You're going to, you're going to, um, well, you're going to burn in the missiles and then you're going to wake up in slavery, you know, reincarnated in the kingdom. So we're supposed to be happy about being our names being written in heaven, not because we can cuss Esau out in his in his own kingdom. You see, even though the flesh, hey, you you do get a little happy being able to tell Esau his 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 uh, destiny. Verse twenty one. In that hour, Yahweh rejoiced in spirit and said, "I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth." That thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. See? So, all of this knowledge, it's been given to babes, which are the men in this truth, who when you look into that word babes, it, it goes into being insignificant. It's not dealing with the, uh, the prudent and the wise, which... Who's considered prudent and wise right now? These these Edomite scholars, these so-called white men that are biblical scholars, you know? People look at them like, oh, th these guys are the wise and prudent. They don't look at us, the guys in the, you know, in sackcloth on the street corners. They don't think we're um, the wise and prudent, you know? No, we're babes, meaning young in this truth, you know? Insignificant, you know? This is who Yahweh Bashem Yashai gave this knowledge to. You know, verse 22, all things are delivered to me of my father and no man knoweth who the son is, but the father and who the father is, but the son and he whom to whom the son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see, for I tell you, that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. See? So, you know, being in this truth, you know, not only are we insignificant and we're the, we're the babes, you know, that's a parable for us. You know, we, we're the ones who have been given this truth, this knowledge, you know. And we're... That's why we're able to, like he said earlier, tread on serpents and scorpions and devils, you know, in this kingdom. And we're insignificant, but yeah, we can still have the power because of the Holy Spirit to do that. But hey, remember, don't be happy because you can cuss the Edomites out. Be happy because you're an Israelite and Lord willing, your, your, your name's written in the kingdom, you know. 
in the book. And then in verse 24, you know, it says, For I tell you that the prophets and the kings who desire to see those things that you see. Well, hey, that, that goes in for me. That goes literally into like chariots. We, we go to camps. We see the chariots. Every, every, this past five weeks, the chariots have sh um, sh revealed themselves to us, you know. And I can see where that, that voice, that, that verse makes sense, you know. I bet you all kind of profit. You know Joel Osteen. You know T.D. Jakes. Um, Creflo Dollar. Wish they could have a chariot roll up on them. You know, wish that they seen the things we've seen, you know. So, um, you know, with that, brothers, just keep enduring, keep pushing. We're all in the fire right now, you know. We're all dealing with the same different things, but the same things, you know. We're all suffering and, and being made hard for this truth and for this knowledge, you know. So just keep pushing, brothers, and, um, and you know, be happy and rejoice because, Lord willing, our names are written in heaven, all right? So with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Ha'avrakakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge the Akiam who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the elect.